Hello, this is Robert Guillaume. Thank you for joining me on Your Money, Manage It. I will be discussing principles that will empower you to manage your finances made easy. Thank you for listening. Today, we're going to take a little bit of a different spin on your money, manage it. And we're going to talk about pets. And you might say, pets? How does that relate to finances? Well, you'd be surprised how pets really affect our finances. You know, as we have entered this new year of 2023, you know, a lot of individuals or a lot of couples or whatever, you know, oh, we need a dog, we should get a dog, or we need a cat, or let's get a cat, or we won't go to extremes like we need a pony or something, but, you know, dogs and cats, the common pet element, you know, oh, we need one, you know, let's get a dog, let's get a dog. Well, you know, that's a big financial consideration that we really don't necessarily consider. And there are, you know, individuals that are on fixed incomes, individuals that are already kind of struggling to make ends meet, and you put a pet in the mix. Well, there are factors I think we should consider. You know, pets can be, and truly most of the time they are. They're a a great joy to our life. They become a family member. Um, Pets are, are a comfort to our lives. You know, you have a dog and you come home from work and that little pet is just so happy to see you and the tail is wagging and, you know, they're just a joy and they're loyal companions. I mean, they just, uh, if you've had pets or you have a pet, you know how loyal that pet is. And quite honestly, make no bones about it, pets can give us more joy than most people. (laughs) So, you know, pets are are wonderful And, and pets can be purposeful. We can have a pet for protection. If, you, if you're, a, a, let's say, a young lady single or something living at an apartment or at home and she has a, a pet, that pet's going to warn her if there's something not right. Pets can be uh, farm workers, you know, to help herd cattle or sheep or whatever, or just be good protectors on a farm from predators. And cats, cats can be, if they're, you know, a, an indoor-outdoor cat or an outdoor cat, Great pest controllers. So they can be purposeful, but they can be expensive. And they can be, let's start with the fact, expensive to buy. If you go to buy a pet, I, as well as you probably have known, maybe you fall in the ballpark where you can spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars to buy a pet. Now, some people go to a shelter or rescue place or something to get their pet or maybe a friend or someone has puppies or kitty, kittens or whatever, but they can be expensive. Well, let's talk about another element if you have a pet that's expensive. Pet food. If you have a pet, as I, I have pets, and when I go shopping for their food the past year, The inflation that's been tacked on to pet food is enormous. What was, let's say, just an average, normal, nice quality can of dog food, average can of dog food, that was $1.25 is now $1.70. Do the math. Huge increase. And that doesn't count if you buy the fancy foods, the fancy dog foods, and, you know, the more expensive dog foods and so forth. Pet food has increased by 30, even 50 percent in the past year in price. You know, each month, I have a personal expenditure for our pets that on the pet food that when I look at my grocery bill and I'm out and I buy the pet food, too, If I just look at the grocery ticket, a large part of that grocery ticket is pet food expense. It really is. Just a consideration. Another expense if you own a pet and you do it correctly 
are pet medications. Those are not cheap. You know, we have routine medications. I would I would hope you sort of do the same thing if you have a pet, but every month I have routine medications. Now, these are not prescription meds as far as an ailment. These are preventative medications. You know, most of those are topical, but you put them on your cat, you put them on your dog, it, that, that takes care of fleas and, you know, mites and all those kind of things and deworms your pet. And some of those now are so advanced, they do the heartworming in, in included also and that sort of thing. So what are those expenses? I'll just share with you. For my cats and my dog, a six-pack for the dog or a six-pack for the cat of those topical preventative meds, $100 each. Not combined, $100 for the cat, $100 for the dog, a, a packet of six. Wow, that's that, that, and that, that, and I apply those every month. So that adds up. Now, if you have prescription meds for a pet, you know that's expensive. Here's another one. What if you have a pet emergency? You know, <clears throat> I've got one of my cats, well, both of my cats are indoor, outdoor cats. And the one is just a little rascal. He is the, the pest remover for the farm, but he's a little bit of a rascal. And inevitably, he's about 13 years old, and inevitably, he gets into and none of his own doing. He doesn't leave our little farm. He doesn't wander off. But a stray cat will wander in. And at 2 in the morning, out the window, I hear the row, row, row. There we go with the cat confrontation, and I'm out. And two days later, we've noticed, oh, he's got a pretty good gash, or he's got a, an infection that started. So off to the vet for his little emergency run, which is about an annual event. That's not cheap, folks. You walk out of there with about a $250, $300 and that's the emergency visit. That's not the annual visit where you go and take your dog or your cat for the annual checkup and the annual shots of, you know, distemper and so forth and feline, you know, shot and the rabies shots or whatever you get for your pets. It adds up. It adds up. So, you know, and, and let's put out another factor. Just it's fact. So many of the veterinary clinics have, have moved away from, if you still have a personal vet that has a personal clinic, you're becoming in the minority. Because just like with human care, most of the pet care now has become corporate. So you take your pets to these corporate veterinary clinics, and wow, I mean, the prices are not cheap. You get the the... the invoice at the end of your visit and you just look and you kind of, whoa, go into shock. And then you have the little miscellaneous expenses that you have with pets. Do you buy your pets toys? Everybody buys pets toys, they, you know, and you have e equipment. Do you have a walking leash that you buy to walk your dog or do you have collars and do you have da-da-da? Another expense if you have a pet and let's say it's an indoor pet are accommodations. Do you have crates and cages if, if you're gone and that sort of thing? Um, there are other accommodations, even if it's an outdoor pet. If you have cats, go price cat litter. <laughs> that sounds funny, but it's real. And you're, if you change litter regularly, that's an expense. Um, there are modifications if you have a pet. Some people will turn their dogs out in a yard that has been electrified by an invisible electric fence. Some people will go and they'll put up a solid standard fence around a yard to keep their pet in. Wow, not cheap there. And what if you want to travel? What do you do with your pet? Do you board your pet? If you take them to a boarding facility price that out because that's not cheap for three days or four days or a week. 
add up all the cost factors of a pet, or pets, plural, and you will realize that owning a pet is an expense. And it's a hidden expense that you don't always realize in your budget. If I were to put my pets in my budget, which I don't do, it would be hundreds of dollars, maybe thousands of dollars over the course of a year when you consider all the food, all the medications, the, the veterinary you know, bills for you know, the services and so forth. It's costly. So think before you just run out and buy a pet. Put down on paper what I have shared with you because that's a reality. And there's another reality, too. And it goes hand in glove sometimes with finances, but it's a reality. Time management. If you have a pet, pets take time. They take our time. And if you're a stay-at-home person working, which many people are today, you need to do some time budgeting because your stay-at-home job is your job. It's your career. And if you have pets at home, there's some management that takes place there. We live in fast-paced lives today in America. Many people have barely enough time for themselves. They have barely enough time for their family and their children. So think twice. Are you going to have the time it takes for a pet? Now, I know a lot of people, you know, just put their pets in a crate or whatever, and that, I'm not saying that's bad or good. I personally would not do that, but people do that today. So, you know, that that's the way that is. But still, if your pet's an indoor pet, if you have a dog that's pretty much a house dog, somewhere you have to budget time to walk that dog, take that dog outside, unless you turn it out in the backyard. A lot of people have to take, and here's another expense, they groom dogs. They'll take dogs to a professional groomer. And I will tell you, professional pet groomers are not cheap. So that's another expense. And then, again, you have time management, cleaning kennels, cleaning litter box, feeding, playtime, taking your dog to a dog park, if that's what you do. I mean, all of these things are considered time management, and that can detract from your daily lifestyle, <clears throat> excuse me again, and detract from just your opportunity of your career. Now, realize this, ladies and gentlemen, pets bring us great joy. They bring us companionship. They bring us love. But there's a closing factor. Be aware that they also bring us great grief when we lose them. And, you know, over the years, my wife and I have had several pets, cats and dogs and whatever, and we have watched some of our pets pass away. And it's heartbreaking. It's traumatic. It takes a toll. So, you know, I would just simply say, if you're going to invest in a pet, make sure you can financially do so. Make sure that you can also manage your pet with proper time management for you, your family, and so forth. And I'm going to close with this little piece of advice that a veterinarian mentioned to me, and you can carry this with you, whether you're 20 years old with a pet or 65 years old with a pet. Veterinarian told me these words of wisdom. If you have a pet, you simply have to love your pet every day because there are no guarantees they will be with you tomorrow. So I think that was pretty wise advice, especially if you've ever lo uh, loved and lost a pet. So, that said, pets are great, they're our friends, they're our companions, but they're also a financial and time management responsibility. 
So enjoy your pet. If you're going to get one, just consider what uh, my advice and go from there. And happy pet hunting. So have a good day and have a nice new year. This is Bob Guillaume saying have a good day. Thank you for joining me on Your Money, Manage It. My book, How to Manage Personal Finances Made Easy and Avoiding the College Debt Trap, can be found on Amazon and the bookshop. I will also include the link in the description of this episode. Find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And join me again next Monday. Thank you for listening.